important news, right? The news that really, really matters. The one that I really want to get involved in is Man United's um, incredible 5-0 victory at home against Red, Bull's, uh, Red, Bull, Red Bull Leipzig. An absolutely incredible performance against, I think, the current leaders in the Bundesliga, right? Um, the German Bundesliga is no Farmers League. It's no Serie A. It's no Ligue 1. Right, this is a serious league with some actually incredibly talented coaches, players, and some of the most enviable footballing structures out there in world football. Right, so there's no chumps, especially against Red Bull Leipzig. I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, got to the semi-finals of Champions League last season. So again, no mugs, and we came into this game, you know, with with some confidence, of course, but also kind of, you know, uh, dreading the thought that we were going to get torn apart by a team who, on paper, don't have as better, don't have better players than us but might if it could be argued they have a better coach right in Jul in julian nagelsman a coach a lot of people have been kind of hyping up somebody who people think is going to go on to do big things he's i think in his mid-30s at the moment really doing incredible stuff and you know has that kind of young coach um magic around him and again you know players who are not not a lot of us have probably heard of who are really pulling up a lot of trees you know they've even got Angelino playing at left back who's I think the top scorer of Red Bull Leipzig who's on loan for Manchester City so again a team that's great in the sum of their parts with a really innovative young attack-minded uh you know German attacks German pressing style football against a team like United who kind of kind of crumble under pressure sometimes defense you know not the most comfortable especially after the shaky few opening weeks of the season with David De Gea and Harry Maguire and of course Aaron Wan-Bissaka suffering from some you know dip in form uh, Luke Shaw being Luke Shaw and whoever partners Harry Maguire just not really you know pulling up any trees so we were all pretty worried I know I was um I didn't I I kind of didn't expect us to, I didn't think we would lose but I also didn't think we'd have a good performance so you know those kind of meh, meh sort of matches where you don't really think we're going to do well but you also think we're going to um, we're not going to really impress or give the fans anything to kind of root for and this game was complete opposite of my expectations we started off pretty well we were basically um, really compact. We were hard to break down, limit Ribble Salzburg to a couple of shots from outside the area. And then we basically went ahead just um, over the 20 minute mark, right? So yeah, 21 minutes here with an amazing ball played in by uh, Paul Pogba behind the back line, driving towards the defense, you know, in the position that he actually should be playing for Man United and slipped it into Greenwood, who was playing up front alongside Anthony Martial. And it has to be said, this is the formation that I want us to play Play at all times at all times please for the love of god i'm not too sure again my um assumptions and my kind of critique of only gonna soul shark still stand i still think he's too conservative i still think his in-game management it leaves something to be desired i still think he has too many favorites in his team maybe it's because he's been burnt from previous time from the galacticos quote unquote on our side but i do think he needs to kind of prioritize trying to get as many of the best players he can on the pitch and then of course putting into a shape that works as opposed to putting all the crappy players there and then bringing the good players up on the bench i think there needs to be a bit of a balance there my my um doubts to one side whatever formation this guy stumbled on um against um Red Bull Leipzig has to be the formation going forward. Essentially, the back five kind of picks itself, but the midfield is the important part. We have Nemanja matches sitting, and then on either side, a slightly forward, we had Fred and Pogba, but you could say in the game, quite possibly, Matic was Fred and Matic were sort of playing as a double pivot. And then you had Pogba playing on the left-hand side, which is sort of like his the side that he scored the most goals at for Juventus, had the most assist and was really impactful there. And, and I think he played that position slightly as well for France, even if not maybe a little bit further back, but still from that left-hand side position. Then we had Van der Beek playing behind one of, um, two of, sorry, Mason Greenwood and Ashley Martial. Now, starting off up front, and going our way back Greenwood on that position works far better than working on a front three basically being like a right wing forward because he doesn't really track back and he always floating and he's always kind of coming inwards but he's prone to kind of tracking back and being more accountable once he's playing in a sort of quasi centre forward position because ultimately I still think Mason Greenwood's best position is going to be centre forward he's going to end up progressing and developing into a really 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 deadly striker because his finishing is ridiculous left foot right foot the only thing he needs to improve I think so far is his heading ability which you haven't seen that much of and then he was playing alongside Martial you know what you get we're going to get with Martial ability to hold up the ball stretch the defence and just basically have some of the best close control up there then we had Van der Beek playing just behind them who I think in my opinion 
again, maybe controversial. I think Van der Beek is the best number 10 in the club. If you think I would much prefer having Van der Beek playing there than having Bruno Fernandes, I think in this formation, you could easily switch Matic for Fred and then have uh, Bruno Fernandes playing in that sort of position there on the right-hand side, basically playing as a as a quasi number eight. So you'd have Van der Beek as a 10, Pogba as a six, um, and then, um, yeah, Pogba as a six, uh, Bruno Fernandes as an eight, and then Matic or whoever's playing, uh, or Fred, whoever's playing a DM as a quasi number four. That is the perfect formation. It could be looked at as a diamond. You know, if you pull back Fred over here, it goes back to a double pivot. But that formation was incredible. It we completely nullified RB Leipzig's attacks when they when we were in possession. We had enough out balls in the forward line to kind of relieve some of the pressure. It kind of helped that they were defending with an incredibly high line. The the high line kind of got exposed. Um, a few times, I guess, with Marcus Rashford's goals and, and Anthony Martial's goals. Now, going on to Marcus Rashford, this guy scored a hat-trick in 12 minutes. A 12-minute hat-trick. What a superb performance. And this is the thing you've always wanted to see from Marcus Rashford, right? This ability to come on and just be clinical in the goals that he scores. And what we saw from Marcus Rashford's finishing was something that I think, I believe he has in his locker. Similar to what Serge Nabry does for Bayern Munich. You know, in basketball, you have that thing where... They have, each player has a, again, I don't watch basketball from what I know looking on the outside. They have like, um their like textbook or signature <clears throat> finishes or moves, whether it's a certain layup or the way they approach a three-point shoot, a three-point shot, right? They have a way to kind of approach it, whether it's like they dribble left and right, they step back and boom, but they have a particular thing that they kind of go. It's like a drill they sort of run through and then they sort of do that again and again and again when they play. The only person I saw who kind of, was lauded about doing a similar sort of thing was maybe Ian Robin and um, Cristiano Ronaldo. There'll be plenty of conversation, even maybe Frank Lampard too. Um, there'll be plenty of people who played with those guys saying, oh, they spent an hour each day after training going through a drill, whether it was Cristiano Ronaldo doing his sort of like signature step of a uh, ball out of his feet and then bang shot, whether it was um, whether it was Frank Lampard running into the area or shooting from far, whether it was Ian Robin cutting in from the right-hand side and bending the ball into either corner. Each player had the certain thing but nowadays in football you don't really see that too often and the one that reminds me the most of it is Serge Nabry where he has that finish where he comes in for the right hand side and he finishes it you know he can go any direction left right left or right foot and of course either corner and I think uh, Marcus Rush has the ability to do so so much so my favorite goal of his hat trick was the second goal because it was instinctual it was instinctive and also something that he looked like he practiced in a drill he got the ball in that sort of like weird number 10 position right in between the lines the defender as the defender came up to step up to try and tackle him he he dropped his shoulder dipped back onto the right hand side pushed it out of his feet and then smashed it bottom corner like just a beautiful beautiful finish probably one of the best goals that i've seen him finish uh for united in a very 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 long time and what an incredible performance from marcus rashford well deserved for a guy that's doing so much for everybody off the pitch to have a success um, doubled up on the pitch as well super important especially with all these people out there saying oh he should concentrate on football and he's wasting his time I was like shut up shut up I can score a hat-trick in 12 minutes in the Champions League against some pretty stiff opposition you know keep your mouth strong again um, superb performance imperious performance from all everybody um, congrats to Oli for getting the selection right congrats as well for getting the substitutions right too he substituted everybody like for like which is, was great to see none of this sort of square pegs and round hole stuff and again I'm all for having one matter Daniel James play. I don't mind those guys playing, but I want them to play in this formation if to bring about the best of them. So if you're going to have one matter play, have him come on and replace Van der Beek in that position to bring out the best of him. Because I still think even throughout his, how many, he's been at the club for what, five, six seasons? He still haven't seen the best of one matter because he never gets to play in his, uh, you know, preferred position. So if you're going to bring one matter on, let him play for Van der Beek. Let him play for Bruno Fernandes, whoever you pick on number 10. If you're going to bring on Daniel James, let Daniel James play for, you know, in the place of a Marcus, uh, sorry, of a Mason Greenwood, right? Or of a, of a Marcus Rashford. But don't have him play out right on the wing where he doesn't have it, the ability to kind of bring out the best in him. Let them play with the better players and hopefully it brings out the best in them. But I would prefer it 
if our better players were playing because look at what we get and then we still have such devastating op options to come off the bench the Cavani the Bruno Fernandes that was playing on the bench Twan Zabi had opportunity to come on McTominay come on and didn't it didn't kind of disappoint really really strong performance give us a really good um momentum heading into the Arsenal game which I'm really looking forward to before I wasn't you know it's always a bit of a flip of a coin whether how we face you know, Arsenal especially now during you know this social media age where the Arsenal fans are probably one of the most annoying fan bases in the world the last thing you want to do is lose to them especially you know off the back of such an impressive performance I'm hoping this would be a good platform for us to kind of carry on but again superb performance for everybody involved um, nothing but ratings and I'm super super over the moon with how we played going on but let me know did you watch the game what do you think are you are you confident of our performance or do you think it's a bit of a fluke let me know in the comments down below